Okay, now we're about to look at our last type of inequalities for this section. We're going to look at rational inequalities. And you'll remember when we did rational equations, uh, rational equations have a variable in the denominator. Well, rational inequalities will as well. So here's the procedure for rational inequalities. First, we need to rewrite the inequality if necessary so that zero is on one side and there's a single fraction on the other side. And then we'll find our critical numbers. In this case, the critical numbers will be any number that causes the top to equal zero and any number that causes the bottom to equal zero. And just like last time with quadratic inequalities, we will choose a test value from each interval and test just like we did before. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that any value that causes the denominator to equal zero will never be included in the solution set because it doesn't check. It makes the left side undefined instead of making it equal zero. Therefore, any critical number from the denominator will always have a parenthesis and never a bracket. Okay, this will be our first example together. Um, this is not an example from the book. It's one that I picked out to do with you. But let's look at it together. So we've got 5x minus 3 over x plus 5 is less than or equal to 0. So it's good that the right side is 0. That means that we can start out getting our critical numbers. So one critical number will be whatever makes the top equal 0. And the other critical number will be whatever makes the bottom equal 0. So take the top, set it equal to 0, and solve and the top critical number is 3 fifths. Now take the bottom expression, set it equal to zero and solve, and our bottom critical number is negative five. Put those on the number line, and just like we did with quadratic inequalities, we're going to test a value from each interval. So something less than negative five, I choose negative 10. Something in the middle interval, I choose zero. Something bigger than 3 fifths, I choose 10. Okay, now plugging negative 10 into the top here, 5 times negative 10 is negative 50, minus 3 is a negative number. In the bottom, negative 10 plus 5 is a negative number. Negative divided by negative is positive. Is that less than 0? No. Okay, for the middle interval, plug in 0, 0 minus 3 is negative. In the bottom, 0 plus 5 is positive. Negative divided by positive is negative. Is that less than 0? Yes. And for the 10, 10 times 5 is 50, 50 minus 3 is positive. In the bottom, 10 plus 5 is positive. And is that less than 0? No. And so our middle interval is the only one that's part of our solution. We'll graph that. Um, we do have an or equal to bar here. So you're thinking brackets, but remember that only the top critical number can get a bracket and the bottom one cannot. And so our uh, solution is parentheses negative 5 comma 3 fifths bracket. Now this one is a little bit different. This one has a 1 on the right side so we cannot look at this fraction and determine our critical numbers because we don't have a 0 on the right side. Let's move the 1 over to the left side and now let's get a common denominator. Remember that the left side has to be all one fraction before you're able to find your critical numbers. So we'll need a common denominator here. The denominator needs to be x plus 4, so let's multiply top and bottom of this term by x plus 4. Okay, now I need to get the top all combined into one expression, so I'll distribute the negative 1 and now I'll combine like terms. 5 minus 4 is 1. And so we have uh, negative x plus 1, or you could have written it 1 minus x. But I've got negative x plus 1 and x plus 4 in the bottom, greater than or equal to 0. So now that it, now that it has 0 on the right side, I can find my critical numbers. The top critical number is whatever makes the top equal 0. So the easiest way to solve this is to add x to both sides. And the bottom critical number is whatever makes the bottom equal 0. So that would be negative 4. Now put both of those on our number line and choose a test value from each interval. I need to pick a number that's less than negative 4. I choose negative 10. I need to pick a number that's between negative 
4 and 1, I choose 0. I need to pick a number that's between 1 and infinity. I choose 10. So let's put negative 10 into our expression here. Negative, negative 10 plus 1 would be 10 plus 1, which is 11, which is positive. And in the bottom, negative 10 plus 4 is negative. Positive divided by negative is negative. Is that greater than 0? No. Plug in the 0. 0 plus 1 is positive. 0 plus 4 in the bottom is positive. Positive over positive is positive. Is that greater than 0? Yes. And now plug in the 10. Negative 10 plus 1 is negative, And 10 plus 4 is positive. Negative divided by positive is negative. Is that greater than 0? No. So now the only interval that's part of our solution is the middle one. So we shade the middle. We need to use brackets, but we can't use a bracket on the bottom critical number. So we put a parentheses on the negative 4 and a bracket on the 1. And now our um, solution is from negative 4 to 1, uh, including the 1. And here is another one that you can try by yourself. This one's not too bad. So um, pause the video and try it on your own, and then we'll do it together. And now let's go through it together. So because this one does not have a 0 on the right side, the first thing to do is move the 2 over to the left side. And the next thing to do is to get a common denominator for this term so that we can combine all of this into one fraction. So multiply top and bottom by x minus 6. Now we'll have to distribute the minus 2 here. A lot of people lose this negative, so make sure you don't lose the negative. So it's, it's minus 2 times all of this. That's going to give us 3 minus 2x plus 12 in the top, and in the bottom, x minus 6. And that's less than or equal to 0. And combine like terms, here we have 3 and 12. Together they make 15. Okay, now, the critical numbers will be whatever makes the top equal 0 and whatever makes the bottom equal 0 now that we have the 0 on the right. So the top critical number, take that top expression, set it equal to 0 and solve it, and you get x is 15 over 2. And the bottom one, x minus 6 equals 0, and that means x equals 6. So now take these two critical numbers and put them on our number line. And now just to note here, 15 halves is equal to 7 and a half, just so that you have a decimal approximation so you know how to choose your test values. So let's choose a test value in each interval. This time, because both of our critical numbers are positive, 0 is actually in the left interval. And now we need to choose something between 6 and 7 and a half. I choose 7, and now we need to choose something bigger than 7, and I choose 10. Okay, now plugging in 0, negative 2 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 15 is positive. In the bottom, 0 minus 6 is negative. Positive divided by negative is negative. Is that less than 0? Yes. Plugging in 7, negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. Negative 14 plus 15 is positive. In the bottom, 7 minus 6 is positive. Positive divided by positive is positive. Is that less than 0? No. And plugging in 10, negative 20 plus 15 is going to be a negative number. In the bottom, 10 minus 6 is positive. Negative divided by positive is negative. Is that less than 0? Yes. And so our solution is the two end intervals. But remember, we cannot put a bracket on the bottom critical number. So the 6 has to have parentheses, even though we have the or equal to line. The or equal to means the top can have a bracket, but the bottom critical number never can. And so our solution goes from negative infinity to 6, union 15 over 2 to infinity. Here is one more reminder to be careful with the endpoints of the intervals when solving rational inequalities. We've said it several times now, but remember the bottom critical number cannot have a bracket. The bottom critical number gets parentheses, and the top critical number gets parentheses or brackets depending on what kind of symbol you've got. Now here's another example for us. We've got 2x minus 1 over 3x plus 4 is less than 5. 
let's get our 5 over to the left side so we can get a common denominator and have 0 on the right. And the common denominator needs to be 3x plus 4. So now I'll distribute this negative 5 here. That'll give us minus 15x and minus 20. And now we'll combine like terms in the top. 2x minus 15x is negative 13x, and negative 1 minus 20 is negative 21. And now that we have the 0 on the right side, the critical numbers are whatever makes the top equal 0 and whatever makes the bottom equal 0. Okay, so I'm getting a top critical number of negative 21 over 13 and a bottom critical number of negative 4 over 3. Now, this is the only thing that's different about this example is that our critical numbers are not nice, pretty whole numbers. They are kind of ugly fractions. And so, rather than wrestle with the fractions themselves, let's just use our calculators to get a decimal approximation. 21 divided by negative 13 is about negative 1.6 and negative 4 divided by 3 is about negative 1.3. And that way, we can pick our critical numbers a little better. But when I label my number line, I'm still going to use the fractions because that's the official number we're working with. And these are rounded off. Um, so, picking our test values, I just need something that's less than negative 1.6. I'm going to go with negative 10. Here I need something that's between negative 1.6 and negative 1.3. I'm going to go with negative 1.5. And that's what decimal approximations will do for you. This way we don't have to worry about a fraction. And something bigger than negative 3 fourths, how about 0? And now plugging the negative 10 into our expression, you know, use your calculator if you want to. I'm coming up with positive over negative. That's going to be a negative number. Is that less than 0? Yes. Plugging in negative 1.5, I definitely would use my calculator. That's going to give me a negative over a negative, which is positive. Is that less than zero? No. And plugging in zero, I'm going to get negative in the top and positive in the bottom. Negative divided by positive is negative. Is that less than zero? Yes. Okay, so our solution is the two intervals on the ends of the line. And this time, neither number has a bracket because we don't even have the OR equal to line. And our solution in interval notation is shown here. Now, this is the last one we're going to do of this type. This is a practice one for you to try on your own. Um, so pause the video and try it, and then I'll go through it with you. So let's look at it together. We have this 1 on the right side. We know we can't find our critical numbers until we have a 0 here. So let's move the 1 to the left side. And now let's get a common denominator so we can get all this combined into one fraction. So I'll multiply top and bottom by x minus 5. And I'll distribute the negative 1. And that'll give us x plus 3 minus x plus 5 in the top and x minus 5 in the bottom. Now the top, when you combine the like terms, you lose the x completely. So you have 8 over x minus 5 is less than or equal to 0. Now this makes a, an interesting situation, and this is why I wanted to look at this one with you. Since in the top there's no x, there is no critical number for the top. There's no value of x that can make the top equal 0. So no solution there. And in the bottom, the only critical number is 5. So when we draw our number line, we only have one critical number to put on it. And that means when we do our test values, we only have to pick two, one that's less than 5 and one that's more than 5. I'll choose 0 and 10. So when I plug in the 0, I get positive for the top, and 0 minus 5 is negative for the bottom. Positive divided by negative is negative. Is that less than 0? Yes. And for the 10, uh, 8 for the top, and 10 minus 5 is positive for the bottom. Positive divided by positive is positive. Is that less than 0? No. And so our only solution here is to the left of 5. And notice that I put the parentheses on it because even though I have the or equal to, this is a critical number that came from the bottom. So the solution needs to be from negative infinity to 5.